classical mechanics, non-inertial frame. So imagine the situation of a person in a train car, and I start with a train car, and then I want this car to accelerate, and like train cars don't really do that, so I added some rockets there, so I got rockets on this. And it's a small person, I guess, or a big car. And then there's a ball falling. And then I have another person over here in a stationary frame. So where there's two coordinate systems, there's the x0, y0, and this stays stationary. So this would be an inertial reference frame, and meaning it doesn't accelerate. And this one is accelerating. Okay, so let's say that both of these people want to look at this ball. And they do, because it's a clear windowed train car. So this person has the ball right there with the position r vector r0 and this person's origin is right there so it has uh, a vector we'll just call that one r and it turns out that at t equals zero these two frames were the same part but they were accelerating so actually i can say that there is a vector r defining the location of this coordinate system with respect to this. This is, I'm talking about non-inertial frames with linear acceleration. It gets more complicated when we rotate. We'll do that. So if I have these three vectors, let me just write them. I have R, I have R, and I have R, zero. Now don't you hate that when we do that and we, everything's R and you know, but capital R, it's a capital R, so uh, that's fine. And so, if I, if I look at this, this is a vector addition problem such that r0 is equal to, equal to r plus r. So if I know the position of this, then I can find the relationship with how they both measure those things. But this is moving, and this is moving, and r is not constant. So what if I want to get the plot the motion of this? And, and I know that if it's dropping, it's going to accelerate. Well, that means I'm going to have to take the derivative. I'm going to get the velocity and the, and the acceleration. So um, if this starts at the same place, I can actually write this as the following function with a constant acceleration. R is equal to some, um, I'll call it VF, the velocity of the frame. No, VF zero at time t equals zero times t plus one half a t squared. So a is the acceleration of the frame because of those rockets. And so this is just a kinematic equation assuming that it started at r equals zero, right? So if I know the time, I can find the position. It's getting further and further away. And we're going to plot it. Don't worry, we're going to plot it. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. So the derivative of r zero with respect to t, I'm going to call that r0 dot. I don't like doing double decorations on things, but I did. There's a, a vector decoration and a dot decoration. And so we like to use the dot to represent derivative with respect to time. That's going to be equal to r dot plus r dot. See, and if you're just listening to this, you're going to be like, that guy's not making no sense. And I know. It's a capital R. But capital R dot, if R is this, then we can take find that, and this is going to be equal to R dot plus VF zero plus A T, right? Because if I take the derivative of this with respect to time, I have a T, and so that just becomes the velocity, and then I have uh, the two comes down and I get A T. Now let's do it again. Uh, let's take the second derivative of R zero with respect to time, and that's going to be equal to r0 double dot, that's going to be equal to the derivative of this, which is just going to be r double dot. The derivative of this is just a constant, so that's 0. And the derivative of at is just going to be a. And that's the reference frame. That's the acceleration of the reference frame. So now, if I want, but this is important. OK. Now, if I, I want to use Newton's second law, so in the reference frame, the inertial reference frame, I have this. I have uh, a gravitational force, mg. So I can say f net is equal to, uh, let's just say, m r0 double dot. But Newton's second law doesn't work in a non-inertial reference frame. I can't get r double dot. Well, I can. 
let's just solve this for r double dot where I know I have r zero double dot and where Newton's second law does work. So I can say r double dot is equal to uh, r zero double dot minus a. And that means I get the following. I can write, I can multiply by the mass. I get m r double dot. The acceleration in the non-inertial reference frame is equal to m r zero double dot minus m a. m r zero double dot is f net. So this is going to be equal to f net minus m a equals m r z r double dot. So this is our modified Newton's second law. This says that if I want to use Newton's second law, I have to add in this fake term. I call this a fake force. It's a fake force because these are the real forces. These are forces due to interactions with real things. Gravity, springs, air resistance, me pushing on something. Those are real. But if I want to use Newton's second law in an accelerating reference frame, then I have to add this in there. Okay, let's go back up here and model this situation. Let's model a falling ball in an accelerating L, uh, car. So I'm going to need to pick some values here. So let's say, um, let me draw my two coordinates. There's x0, y0, and then here's my car. And this is x, y, and so um, in the reference frame, I need my initial velocity. I'm going to say I'm going to drop it from rest in the car. So I'm going to say uh, r0, no, 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 r dot 0. That's the velocity of this at time t equals 0. It's going to be equal to 0, 0, 0. I'm going to release it from rest. And I'm going to say r0 in, oh, this is bad. Let's call that one. Because <laughs> I was using the zeros over here. This is the initial, the initial velocity. The initial position, r1, is going to be equal to zero, uh, two, zero. I'm going to drop from two meters, and this is meters per second. Now I need to know the acceleration of the frame. Let's say a is equal to one, uh, let's give it a vector, uh, zero, no, 1.500 meters per second. And if you want to give them the ball a mass, let's say it's 0.1 uh, kilograms, and let's say g is zero, negative 9.8, zero. So if I want to model this in the, in the uh, non-inertial frame, I have f net is equal to mg minus uh, ma equals m r double dot. So that's not too bad, right? And so now I can just um, solve for r double dot. r double dot is going to be equal to, let's just call that uh, x double dot y double dot, z double dot, and that's going to be equal to uh, 0, negative g, 0, minus 1.500. 0. So this is going to be equal to uh, negative 1.5, negative 9.8, 0. That's the x acceleration, that's the y acceleration. We can model that just fine. I can say, okay, once I know the acceleration, I can, let's just go ahead and write this out. So x is going to be uh, the initial x, which let's say that I said was 0. So it's x1 plus vx1, which is 0, t, plus 1 half x double dot t squared, squared, y equals y1 plus vy1 t plus 1 half y double dot t squared. So I can get the motion of that in any time. Now, let's do inertial. What's different in the inertial? In the inertial, I get f net equals m y, uh, r zero double dot. My, I'm just getting all messy here. I feel, I feel like I've, I've just not been a good person. So let's say this is inertial. 
So F net is going to be M R zero double dot. Now I do need my initial conditions for uh, the non-inertial frame. So I need to pick, let's say, um, let's say I release it at t equals zero. So they were right on top of each other just to make things easier. So if that's the case, can I find R zero one? the initial position. Well, it's going to be the same thing, right? Because if they're right on top of each other, this is going to be equal to 0, 2, 0 meters. What about R01 dot? What's the initial velocity? So that's not too bad either, right? Because at t equals 0, what is the, uh, the velocity of this? Well, um, because of my equation, right here, at t equals zero, uh, oh no, I need this equation right, right here. At t equals zero, um, then I get the initial velocity, but if the cart started from rest, then that initial velocity is zero. So the initial velocity in this case is also gonna be zero. It might not be, right? It depends on what you're doing. So now I can say R01 double dot. And 01, this is 01 for, for the stationary, and that's initial. It's just going to be equal to mg, which is going to be m0, negative 9.8, 0. So I get x02 uh, is going to be, oh, yeah, in the x direction, x0, 2 is going to be equal to x01, which is 0, plus v01, which is 0, uh, plus 0, because the acceleration in the x direction is 0. So I just get, it just moves straight down. And then y02 is going to be y01, which I do have, plus v uh, y01t, which is 0, minus 1 half gt squared. Okay, so I have two motions. So let's go ahead and plot these two motions in Python just to make a comparison and see if they, you know, just see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to jump over here to Python. And I kind of already got a head start because I didn't want to type this in here. So I've already made, I made two graphs. One's a trajectory graph for the inertial reference frame. I'm calling that FI and it says inertial at the top and one's for non-inertial. So I, I still need my values, right? So let's go ahead up here and say, um, do all my inertial stuff. I'm looking at my other piece of paper. So I'm going to say uh, M equals 0 0.1 doesn't matter. G equals, let's just say G is equal to the scalar 9.8 because I already broke it up into X, Y, and Z. Uh, X is gonna be equal to zero. That's initial position um, let's call that x1 is equal to 0, y1 is equal to 2, uh, and then the z's are 0. Uh, x.1 is equal to uh, 0, y.1 is equal to These are all in the moving accelerating reference frame. Uh, and then I can write, let's just say t equals 0 dt is 0 0.01 and let's say while y1 is greater than or equal to 0. So until it hits the bottom of that of that thing we're going to do the following. Uh, rate 100 so it moves in real time. Now I'm going to calculate x and y. So uh, let's just say this x double dot is equal to I should have done it as a vector. Let's do this as a vector. r1 is going to be equal to the vector, uh, what did I say it was? 0 to 0. And then g, I'm going to change this back to vector 0, negative 9.8, 0. No, I didn't do that. I was writing it the way it should be written, vector. Okay. Um, r1 dot is the velocity vector 0, 0, 0. Okay. So now I can just do this all in one step. So I can say r equals, oh, r, yeah, r. r is equal to r1 plus uh, r1 dot times t plus, uh, let me write the acceleration, um, r1 double dot is equal to vector 
negative 1.5, negative 9.8, zero. R1 double dot times T squared. So that's my position uh, of the ball in the accelerated frame. And let's plot that. So I'm going to say F in dot plot. That's my non-inertial plot. And it's going to, I'm going to plot X versus Y. So it's going to be R dot X, R dot Y. And then I'm going to increase T. Let's do that right here. T equals T plus DT. I think that should work. Let's see what happens. No. Can't find Y1. Oh. R1 dot Y. So you'll notice that it's going, it's actually moving. Let's put a dot there. Um, why does it take them so long? Mm, let's do this for while. Oh, wow, it's great. Now it's T, while T is less than 2. Let's just do that. Um, and let's put a dot up here dot equals true. Okay, so it keeps falling down forever. Oh, it did stop. So why did it not stop before while R1, let's see, 0.5. Why did it go for so long? I had while R1, oh, R, it should be R, while R dot Y is greater than or equal to zero. And I don't have R. So let's put that up here. R equals R1. Okay, so it fell. There it goes. And that's kind of a problem, but not really. Now, let's do the same thing for the inertial reference frame. So I'm going to say uh, R, I'm gonna say O1 is equal to uh, vector zero to zero, same thing. R dot, R O dot one, that's the initial velocity is also zero. And then R O double dot one, double dot, is gonna be equal to uh, just G. And now I can plot that R O equals, nope, R O equals R O one plus R O dot one times T plus R O dot, I didn't say one, that's fine, dot times T squared. Oh, there should be a one half right there. 0.5 times, 0.5 times. And then let's plot that F I dot plot, R O dot X, R O dot Y. And it's gonna run while the other one's greater than zero, but they're the same thing. Okay, so that's the trajectory. You notice it falls straight down and that one falls back. But they both take the same amount of time. They both hit the ground at the same time. Okay, that, I'm, I probably could have put them both in the same graph. I probably put, should, have, uh, should have put uh, vertical position as a function of time, but, but there you go. I do like having two graphs next to each other. So the next thing is to look at what happens if the, the non-inertial uh, frame is rotating. That's a bit more complicated, but I'll put that in another video.